Hey, what do you know? You're back. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in, okay? And we're looking at cross-matching blood specimens. Wow, I want to give you a little bit of insight to that. All right. It is critically important for the registered nurses, nurse practitioners, right? Everybody medical to fully understand that. But even you licensed practical nurses, even though, right, you can't, like, start the transfusion, but you can stand with the RN and verify that we're about to give the appropriate transfusion, right? So it's good for you to be up on your game. Okie dokie. What are we doing in RN Glyph Notes? Helping students to see through larger concepts. Giving you what? Study smart strategies. That's right. <laughs> okay. And so we start out with what two components of blood from the patient and donor are used during the cross-match testing. All right. So drop that down or type that in. What two components from the patient and the donor are we using when we do a cross-match? And here's how it goes. To begin the cross-match, blood from a donor with the same ABO, right, and RH type as a recipient is selected. In a test tube, serum from the patient is mixed with the red blood cells from the donor. Serum from the patient, right? And the red blood cells of the donor. Now, in later series, we're going to get into antibodies and things like that. Uh, you know, things that we find in the serum and, and plasma and things, right? And, and give you more of a basis of this. But for right now, serum from the patient and the red blood cells of the donor. Okay, now, what we're watching that test tube for, we want to see if clumping occurred. If there's clumping, the blood is not compatible, all right? If clumping does not occur, the blood is compatible, all right? If an unexpected antibody is found in either the patient or the donor, the blood bank does further testing to make sure the blood is compatible. So that's the whole idea. We don't want the patient to experience, what do you think? An acute hemolytic reaction, especially, right? Where, uh, right, there's pain at the IV site. Why? Is that blood's not actually getting along well as it's infusing into the client. Uh, other things that they might complain of is flank pain, right? We know that the kidneys are constantly managing and filtering our blood. And sometimes when that reaction is happening, uh, your patient's complaining of back pain. And that's important to, to keep in mind. I mean, pain here, right, you're thinking, okay, yes, this is related to the blood. But for some, they may not make the connection that Yes, the blood's infusing, and my patient's complaining of back pain, and it actually has to do with that transfusion, okay? Real important to keep in mind. All right, now, so cross-matching. We are combining the patient's serum, like we said, with the donor's blood to observe for a possible reaction. In this case, we're going to kind of zoom in on that thing like it's a Petri dish or something, but we know this should be in the test tube. Okay, so donor's blood and patient's serum. Right, so the blood cells there. And cross-matching, let's see what happens. So we mix them together in the test tube. And wait a minute, maybe we see little clumps going on here. But let's zoom in and see what's actually happening. And uh-oh, <laughs> right? Yikes, these dudes are not getting along at all. <laughs> it's shame, right? They are fighting each other, clumping together, right? We got agglutination, okay? Oh no, all right. Now, all right, and another specimen, let's zoom in on this one, and we see that uh, they're not clumping together. There's no clumping, right? So things are good there, and likely that blood transfusion would be uh, safe, okay? All right, so that's a little snippet on uh, cross-matching blood in preparation for blood transfusion. Thank you guys for liking and subscribing. Stay tuned.